Hello everyone, and welcome back to Freelo or Forfeit. Today, we have episode 2 of our series where we're looking into support Lux. Lighting the way! Lux has been a high priority pick in competitive play as of recent times. Going on to Game of Legends, you can see that in a ton of recent games, she's there. On top of that, we have her in S plus tier on our pro guides tier list for supports. It was even locked in by Jinair Greenwing support who is named Kellen. And my name is Kellen too, so you know I had to make a video about it. That's one knock up landing onto Kellen there as Trey has to use the ultimate route going down very very low but Snowflower has no damage to offer apart from. Oh. Okay, Boomerang Blade comes in and he needed that Guardian. She has become very popular in solo queue as a support champion, and with a recent innovation to her build taking Aftershock, it seems that now she has shot up to being the best support in the game. Today, I'll investigate what makes her so good, why pros are playing her in their competitive games, and why her win rate is what it is. When it comes to being a pro, it seems that they like picking support Lux. But why are they pros? Well, that's because they're good. But here's the truth. No one becomes a pro by themselves, which is where Instapro comes in. Instapro is a brand new feature on ProGuides.com that you should all check out. Just give me a second to let you know why. You see these people on the right? They are live pros to help you 24-7. You can have them coach you or even play a game with them and they can tell you what you did wrong as they play the game. This level of direct feedback is helpful for so many people and we've gotten great feedback on this brand new feature. It's so user friendly and the pros have great reviews that you can see at any time. Time. That way you know you're getting a great service. Instapro will help you get Insta better. So click the link below at proguides.com slash exile and click that link and sign up today. Now, in order to fully understand our story for support Lux, let's go back to patch 8.9, more than one year ago today. There were some changes that were given to Lux during season 8, and I believe these are the sole reasons that she can be played support to this day. I believe after patch 8.9, she became a solid and legitimate support. Right before the changes to 8.9, she received some pretty big buffs to her shield, but the biggest thing here is how her cooldowns work. Her Q got its level 1 base damage increased, and its cooldown normalized to 10 seconds at all ranks. Her E was nerfed slightly in some ways, but got its cooldown lowered per rank. What this meant for Lux is that maxing your W shield either first or second after your E became much more effective, because your Q did not scale its CDR down anymore with putting ranks into the ability. Just the base damage was the only thing that went up, and they even buffed the level 1 base damage, so you weren't really penalized that much for only scaling 1 point into this up until level 13. This made building CDR infinitely more effective on Lux, and because you're a pretty freaking good support at level 13, you'll have your E and W all the way maxed out, which was also given a lower cooldown by the way, you become a really high utility poke mage who can play bot lane. The only thing you're losing by maxing E into W is the little bit of a base damage on your Q. Its cooldown was lowered because it was normalized, and you gained a lot more utility. This buff sort of went unnoticed, and I didn't see a lot of people trying support Lux right away. Her win rate has been solid for the last couple of months, and steadily in the background, Lux enthusiasts seem to know that she was a pretty good support. There's another potential buff that I have to look at here, which is the Cheap Shot rune. Cheap Shot was buffed recently, on patch 9.9, .9, and this is really good for Lux as you have several ways to proc it. Whether you're support or mid lane, I recommend trying out this rune as the laning phase damage will surprise you in the early game. The reason that she finally started to come out is because now you have a solidified build and keystone option, taking the resolve tree such as Aftershock or Guardian, and you had buffs to enchanter items on patch 8.24b. This is good because unless you're trolling or really fed, on support Lux you really shouldn't be going Ludens. Things like Athenes, Ardent, Redemption are all pretty good options for support Lux. Finally, there are more tanks being played in the game, such as Sejuani or Darius, and then these enchanters who buff them up, an enchanter Lux or an enchanter Nami who buff up a Darius is incredibly strong and can 1v5 teamfights. Tank supports were also nerfed. Thresh was nerfed, Kench was nerfed, and Alistar was nerfed, so if you ban Nautilus or Pike, you probably get to play versus another enchanter every single game. And to be honest, except for maybe Janna and Sona and Solo Q, you have a lot more in your kit that is valuable. I think Nami is a more consistent support and is a really good pick every single game and being a Nami one trick can get you to challenger, but Lux support has little times here and there where she becomes incredibly valuable and even a better laner in a couple of different matchups. Big shields, good poke, good CC, wave clear to help shove, which is something that Lulu support or Fiddlestick support 
support used to be valuable for. That way you can help shove the lane and reset, and then you have good tower dive potential due to your incredibly long range. Finally, to my point, I believe that the release of the new Lux skin actually played a pretty big role here. Seriously, I'm not kidding. It's not that I think the skin makes her do more damage or something, or that I think the hitboxes are BS like uncertain skins, such as Eye Blitzcrank or that Red J skin. God, I hate that Red J skin. That f***ing forsaken J skin, you can't even see his Q. Come on, right, you motherfuckers. I do believe that because of the skin, a lot more people were inspired and inclined to play Lux, and after we saw Palette at MSI play Aftershock support Lux, these two things were great for her exposure as a champion. Pros started to take her a bit more seriously because they were seeing her more and more in their games. The Lux leaderboard for solo queue is pretty crazy right now, as she has several players in Challenger with insane win rates. One of them is Challenger with nearly a 70% win rate, and most of them were mains of other support champions in the past, but now they are Lux mains and climb very high with her. Listen, it's not the fault of the pros either. You have to remember that they are not paid to play this game, like streamers or Challenger players. No, no, no. They are paid to win this game. Play and win are still very different. Pros have high levels of bias towards certain champions that they know and work in LCS and pro play. And for a good reason, I don't blame them whatsoever. When there are buffs to Gragas, Syndra, Jace, or Ryze, you know without question they will try the champion, and it will be picked up right away. They have proven year in and year out the value that they have at the highest level of play. However, the day that they buff Shaco or Garen, the Pros don't really care that much. I'm sorry to say it, it's very unlikely that some champions will ever be viable at the competitive level. And by all means necessary, Garen isn't that bad in solo queue. Garen has a good win rate. It's not amazing, but it's pretty good in higher elos. It's better than it's been in recent times. And while he is easy, Risty has been getting closer every single day to being challenger with Garen. And even recently, Adrian Riven has been playing some Garen on his account, which is rank 6. With Garen's last buff, this is without question a huge buff. There is no denying whatsoever that this is massive for the champion, but the chances of pros actually giving him a chance is seldom going to be a reality. I do believe that this is the basis for why pros have neglected Lux for so long. She was too squishy, they said. It's not the same damage level of Zyra, they said. It doesn't fit into team comps that we play, they said. Stuff like that. I would say the Aftershock build is one of the main reasons that they started giving her a chance, because in theory, this does actually remove one of her main weaknesses, which is how squishy she is. Support Lux was good before, but if you took Summon Aerie with Inspiration Secondary and you got hooked by a Thresh, you're dead as hell. Just start digging your grave. With Aftershock and Guardian setups, you are not a walking sack of 300 free gold ready to be pulled. You get pulled by Thresh, and you throw your Q back at him. Both of you proc your Aftershock, and both of you run away. If you want to engage on a teamfight as Lux, you can actually flash in, hit your binding, and then shield your whole team and walk out while taking very little damage. Some may chalk this up to Aftershock being OP, and honestly, I don't disagree. It's hard to refute that this rune isn't busted, but I do think that pros should open their mind to more possibilities, which is why today, I give Lux support the seal of approval. I believe that she is free low. Anyway, that's going to do it for today's episode of Free Low or Forfeit. Let me know what you thought of this video in the comment section down below. Seriously, I read every single comment and I'm always looking for feedback and improvement on my videos, so I really appreciate anything that you guys say that is constructive. On top of that, make sure you leave a like and subscribe, and let me know who you want to see in next episode of Free Low or Forfeit. Thanks for watching.